News with Dougal Beattie. Good evening. There are calls tonight for the AFL Premiership Cup to be named in honour of football legend Ron Barassi. He's being remembered as one of footy's all-time great figures, a visionary who changed the way the game is played. Clint Stanaway is at the MCG right next to the Ron Barassi statue. Clint, it's become something of a shrine for fans. It has, Dougal. Good evening. They've been coming here right through the day today, uh, laying flowers and scarves. Some just pausing for a quiet moment of reflection. Others just to say thanks. That's the kind of impact Barassi has had on the game we all love. He was a game changer. He was big hearted as well. A great Melbourne person, a great Victorian and a great Australian. In a game defined by numbers, the 31 is identifiable with just one man. Ronald Dale Barassi. Barassi handballs it out to the open spaces. Be it as a player, coach or media personality, Barassi was a winner. The people want it badly, but that should be nothing compared with what you, the player, wants. In an era of domination, he played in six premierships for the Demons. Skillful, crafty, revolutionary, Barassi was also fearless and feared by his opponents. Barassi crashes in, leaving bodies in his wake. Barassi was Melbourne through and through, and during the club's golden generation, his demons were almost unbeatable. And there goes the siren to end what has been a disappointing game with Melbourne taking out the premiership. Ron, did you ever in your wildest dreams imagine that, uh, that you would win by quite so much in these conditions? Uh, no, not in these conditions. I thought we possibly would win by this much if we uh, had the dry conditions. But after lifting the cup in 64, he did the unthinkable and crossed to Carlton. I don't think those Carlton players could make a lap with Barassi on his shoulders. And look at Big Nichols. As a Blues player, success wasn't immediate, although it did start to click as he barked orders as coach. That famous mantra ringing in their ears, if it is to be, it's up to me. And you probably don't even know what I'm talking about, do you? That's bloody right! In the 1970 Grand Final, the Blues trailed the Pies by 44 points at halftime and Barassi was livid. What followed was something almost magical. In his time at Carlton and then North Melbourne, Barassi went on to win four flags as coach. That thunderous voice, simply unforgettable. Get out there and attempt to do as I ask. If that fails, then you can blame me, but at the moment, I am blaming you. He'd return to the Demons as coach in 1981. Healy off, Ellingworth on. Bloody weakest piss. I mean, don't look at me like that. How many kicks have you got? That's the answer to everything. Possessions. You give me possessions and I'll shut up. Famously initiating the Irish experiment, which would help land a Gaelic footballer by the name of Jim Steins. There was also a stint in Sydney where he toiled for two years in the 90s to drag the Swans back from near oblivion. Well, I've always prided myself on my innovativeness. Later in life, Barassi was named in the AFL's Team of the Century and inducted into the Hall of Fame, elevated immediately to legend status. He was named a member of the Order of Australia and also found a home in the Sport Australia Hall of Fame. At the MCG, the site of so many extraordinary Barassi moments, a statue unveiled with the help of family. Well, I've been so nervous nervous and excited about this, but Ron's not. He's got his stony grand final face on, hasn't he? And in 2006, there was this inspiring moment on the Yarra. Barassi walking on water, torch in hand, as part of the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony. We had about two or three uh, training sessions about one o'clock in the morning, so uh, they were confident enough to let uh, an old stooge like me uh, have a go at it anyway. Big hearted and big on respect, Barassi famously rushed to the aid of a woman being bashed in St Kilda. He was 72 at the time and copped a belting of his own for stepping in. How unfair it is to be belting women and kicking people on the ground. I mean, it is pathetic. Renowned for his ferocity on the field, off it, there was a much softer side to Ron Barassi and that was abundantly clear when he spoke about his dear father. We never had the chance to do too much of love between father and son, but you know that I love you. In an interview with 60 Minutes, an emotional Barassi reflected on the influence of Ron Barassi Sr, who was killed in action at Tobruk in 1941. I not only carry his uh, name, I carry his blood. 
and uh, he, he did something that I believe he was very proud of. And, and I'm proud of it too. After dominating the footy field, Barassi then dominated the small screen. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ron Barassi. <laughs> he was a go to media man. The crowd roars and then A TV natural sharing insights and laughs alongside fellow legends. There is a time when I, everyone has to be paid back. Barassi's blood always ran red and blue, and eventually he'd return to his beloved demons. Regardless of the scoreline, Ron rarely missed a match. A red and blue scarf draped around his shoulders, belting out the club's song. And in 2021, when Melbourne broke its premiership drought... Oh, you little beauty! There he was again, cradling the silverware. It's a grand old flag, it's a high-flying flag. You couldn't wipe the smile from his face a few months later when he joined fellow club legends to unfurl that grand new flag on the G. One of football's most influential figures, Ronald Dale Barassi, was 87. He survived by wife Cheryl, his children and grandchildren. I've been a very lucky person. I'm appreciative of what I have achieved and all of that, but uh, I don't dwell on it at all. A treasured demon now in heaven. Ron Barassi's legendary deeds are matched by one thing, the love shared for the man on the field and offered as well. His former players, teammates, rivals and friends today remembering him not only as footy's biggest name but a great human too. As Adam Hegarty tells us, his family has now been offered a state funeral. Sheedy, Malthouse, Walls, Kekovic. The biggest names in footy fall in line behind one man telling you everything you need to know about Ron Barassi. Extremely honest, extremely fair. He's the most humble, gracious, modest man you'd ever meet. So you can't imagine football without him. Ron Barassi is a legend, but he's legend with a capital L. The game's immortal trailblazer. On the morning after the news broke, a blue scarf was the first to drape his MCG statue. Barassi transcends tribal colours. Just ask the fans. Actually, a Crows fan, believe it or not. <laughs> I just thought it would be a special day to come past and have a photo. He's been there my whole life, so as, as a kid growing up, Ron Barassi was huge. A giant, even to those who knew him. With every Barassi reinvention came a new profound impact to the champions he coached, a mentor. He was the biggest name in football, and uh, if he said jump, we'd say how high. That's how much we revered him. To his teammates, a leader. I just could not get over the type of person he was, a, a most competitive beast who hated to be beaten. There was more to those famous sprays. If Ron did that, he would be the first person to put his arms around you after the game. To opponents, legends in their own right, he inspired. I always admired Ron from a distance because he was um, always a person that was challenging you. His integrity in, in life and football is just impeccable. But most importantly, amid the accolades, amid the fame, he was a good man. A champion friend. We, he and I, have had some great times together and we had a lot of great football together. So I'm very, very proud to know him and to love him. So how do you properly honour the man? The Victorian government's offered his family a state funeral as calls grow to rename the Premiership Cup the Barassi Cup. Time will tell, but he won't be lost to time. I think it would be fantastic to honour him in that way. Brassy should never be forgotten. Adam Hegarty, Nine News. Funeral to honour Ron Barassi with calls for the AFL to name the Premiership Cup after him. Barassi is being remembered as the godfather of football, a legendary figure who revolutionised the game. The campaign has already started for the man who won four premierships as a coach. Sir Kenneth Luke presents Barassi with the VFL Premiership Cup, one of the most coveted trophies in sport. Six as a player to have the Premiership Cup he so coveted for so long named after him. Is Mr Football really so? If they give him that honour, he thoroughly deserves it. So if we can get something substantial that we remember the name and then we equate the name to what the deeds are It'd be fantastic hello Haley off Ellingworth on 
bloody weak as piss. The country should be aimed after him. I don't know if Premiership, the Premiership cap should be named after him. I don't think that's big enough. Legend is a term reserved for the best of the best. Ron Barassi's death has already overshadowed this final series with a minute's silence before last night's semi-final. He was 87 and frail after a fall, but still... Invincible. That, that's the way you thought about him. There, wait for the ball. Oh, Barassi pounding. Ron's the sort of guy that you expect to be around forever. Barassi crashes in, leaving bodies in his wake before sending Anderson away. His Demons teammates from the 60s and 50s spoke of his on-field attitude and leadership. The most competitive beast who hated to be beaten. The Demons captain beats Martin to the ball and punches it to Keneally. During the game, he came up and gave me a massive spray. And I uh, thought to myself, well, I'm not going to allow that to happen again. But if Ron did that, he would be the first person to put his arms around you after the game. His move to Carlton changed footy forever. It was almost like a death in the family. I mean, we just won the premiership in 1964. We were celebrating. And then out of the blue came the uh, media announcement that he was off to Carlton. Rassi steams in after the ball now, secures for Carlton, drives to the open spaces. But there, his innovation once again changed the game. And one of his favourite sayings was, if you're going to make a mistake, make sure it's a damn good one. You know, don't do anything half-hearted. He taught you not just as a coach, but, but life values as well. Extremely honest, extremely fair. At North Melbourne in the 1970s, his reputation preceded him. Which is going to be the club that dominates the other? I believe it's going to be us. So he had that wonderful intangible quality called presence. You know, the mere mention of his name would send a tingle down your spine. That's the first time I've ever seen a bloke break even time on yeah. crutches. But, uh, oh, here he goes. Look. And then when he spoke, you hung on to every word. And when he glared at you, you just trembled. Don't look at me like that. How many kicks have you got? That's the answer to everything. Possessions. You give me possessions and I'll shut up. Those sorts of things is what made me as a person think, well, Try and be a different coach than a normal coach. Find something new and have some tricks. And Rumba actually had them all. Oh, you must kick the ball in front of him. He was also the game's great innovator. The first player to embrace television. Foot passing is, of course, kicking the ball to your teammate. Are you cut towards me? This is how you do it, aren't you? This is right over. He campaigned for footy interstate and overseas for games on Sunday. He developed handball as a weapon and recruited players from overseas. He's been a trailblazer in my profession. Um, you know, he, was, he, was the, he was the one that started the modern game, really. But the thing I loved about him, he, he, was, he always spoke as if he really studied the game and knew the game, and he did. He continued to live life on the edge even after his footy career finished. His family now considering the government's offer of a state funeral. Mike Brady plans to change a verse of Up There Kazali in Ron's honour on grand final day. Up there Kazali and Barashi too. We love you, number 31. We'll never forget you, and we never will. Uh, I really have to run it past the powers that be, but let's put it to the public because I loved Ron. I absolutely loved him. Friends and fans alike labelled him the most revered figure in Australian football history. His integrity in, in life and football is just impeccable. And look, there are two words that best depict the spirit and the essence of the Australian character and they are fair dinkum. And that's what he was. He was a true blue. He was iconic in every aspect of the word. Nick McCallum, 7 News.